Mission Bay is home, just looking at the uniform. They should be the higher seed, yep. I'll let you just take this from me wherever you want to put it, unless you want me to hold it. Whatever's easier for you. It's not a capital T there, I just did that for me to disseminate between the E's and the I. You know what I mean?
what? Can I do? Do I? Do I call yours here? But I don't have that one. Oh, you mean the you mean the roster? Can you make me a copy of it? Yeah, this is your copy. Yeah, that's your copy. Yeah. All right. That's for the men. That's the men. The ours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a...
Good afternoon and welcome to CIF San Diego TV for game three of six here at the University of San Diego's Jenny Greg Craig Pavilion. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Andrew Jensen alongside Bob Vilvin this afternoon, and we have a good one in store for you here with Mission Bay and Mount Miguel getting ready to go to head to head. Well, both these teams like to get up the court and run, so I think we're going to see a high scoring game. Mount McGill's been here many times before, so the experience factor may be a plus for them, but Mission Bay has been great all year, highly ranked, and I think they'll be ready to play today. And it seems to be a common theme we see throughout the weekend, teams that have been here before, and Mount Miguel is always in the mix for Division Three, and it, their coach by Coach Sandoval does a great job down there. A young team we were talking about before, but Mission Bay has a young team as well, three freshmen on their roster. One of them actually starts and they have been just blowing through opponents in this playoffs. Well, I was fortunate enough to see them play in their semifinal match, and uh, they scored over 80 points, and they've done that a number of times mm -hmm. this year. So I think you're going to see them pressing a lot. They're going to be going after the ball and steals. They have a lot of steals every game, and they turn them into points, and I think that's where we're going to see a little bit of racehorse, and we'll see how the teams settle down after we begin. These two teams are, are pretty similar as far as how they like to play because Mount Miguel is, is usually the same way as well. They like to cause havoc on the defensive side and create turnovers and score on the fast break. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out tonight with a team that's kind of been here before with a new team that's making a rise and has some up-and-coming players that are, that's going to be around for a while. Well, we'll know probably within the first three or four minutes just to see how the teams settle into it. But uh, I think it'll be a little hectic here at the beginning, and, and then we'll see how the teams settle down. Starting lineups tonight, Mount Miguel, Camry Harrison, and Dijanae Pope, Zaria Branch, Shea Young, and Chantel Yell get the starting nod for Mount Miguel. Meanwhile, Mission Bay has Bratisha Solomon, Janae Burton, Yasura Garam, Angelis Hilliard, and Keandra Cannon is uh, the other starter for Mission Bay. Mission Bay will be the designated home team since they were the higher seat, so they'll have their white uniforms on. Meanwhile, Mount Miguel will be in their road black with the red and white trim as we are just a few moments away from tip-off here from Jenny Craig Pavilion. Game three of six, first game today was La Jolla Country Day making their annual appearance here at Jenny Craig and, and beating Bishops uh, fairly handily in that one. And then La Jolla Country Day boys team defeated Francis Parker in the game prior to this and here we are now with Mission Bay taking on Mount Miguel and again after this one we'll have Mission Bay's boys team taking on uh, Cathedral Catholic. Right, it's not it's not common to have uh, both schools programs represented by the same schools and uh, this is kind of a unique situation where we have two schools from La Jolla Country Day, two schools from Mission Bay. It shows you that both those programs are on the way up and doing a great job with their basketball programs. Yeah, definitely. I mean Mission Bay you know, they've just recently become really a, a power in basketball. They've always kind of been the football dominant and always, you know, pretty good at basketball. But lately it's been very good at basketball and, and it's shown here with their program, both their boys and girls program, making it here to the finals. So just about ready for tip off. We do have media timeouts throughout and that's what we're waiting on now as uh, everything kind of relies that goes through the TV channels. Um, so as soon as they're ready for the game to tip, we will you know, have it for you. Uh, but you've seen this team play. Bob, what did, what did you take away watching Mission Bay play earlier uh, well, in the playoffs? Mission Bay will press. They'll push the, their press all the way up to half court. They'll do a little bit of full court pressure, but they will definitely try and force steals. Mission Bay averaged 29 steals a game. That is unheard of. And as many as they steal, they convert most of those as well. That's why they have such a high scoring offense. I think the key to Mount McGill is are they gonna be able to handle the pressure and then handling the pressure, how are they going to attack this Mission Bay defense? And both these teams have players that are uh, heading to continue their basketball careers at the collegiate level. Shea Young for Mount McGill is going to New Mexico State out in Las Cruces, uh, New Mexico. And was it uh, Keandra Cannon? Keandra Cannon's going Arizona. to University of Arizona. So I, I think both of these girls will have great opportunities in college. And uh, as you watch them play today, and uh, I, I think you'll see that they're very talented young ladies and that they will do well at the next level as well. Mm. So it should be exciting here as we're still uh, waiting on word to get the, the game rolling. 
as the officials are uh, waiting patiently by the scorer's table. It looks like, uh, from the looks of them, don't know them by name, don't have uh, the officials up here as far as name goes, but from the looks of them, I've seen these guys many times and definitely uh, some solid officials on the court here this well, afternoon. The officials usually are chosen because they've excelled throughout the year and they get the opportunity to work the championship games. So uh, they're here because of their expertise and uh, I think we'll have a well-officiated game. So a lot of pressure on them as well as there's a lot of pressure on the uh, players as well. They do and you know I, I coach at the high school level as well and uh, it's as a coach, it's frustrating at times, you know, when an official you make bad actually, calls. You've actually disputed a call? Uh, or two. Okay. But um, I give them a lot of credit. I mean, it is a hard job. They're going to they do the best they can, and they always ultimately, you know, do it, what they feel is the best call. And So I give them credit, and they've done a good job throughout this tournament. They have very few friends in Jenny Craig Pavilion. <laughs> I, I give them credit. I don't know how they do it, because no matter what, someone's usually barking at them. I would agree. <laughs> So, all right, we're ready to get this one going. Mission Bay in some uh, unusual looking jersey. They kind of have that uh, t-shirt look to them. And they're going, they have that. Mission Bay wins the tip. Pass down low. And the ball is thrown away, but Mission Bay is able to corral that. Driving to the bucket. Scoop layup is up and in. That's Bertisha Solomon who gets on the board and gets the scoring going in this D3 game. You see right away, Mission Bay has gone into full court pressure. And, and stepped on the end line, and that pressure causes a turnover as Mount Miguel's Dijanae Pope stepped out of bounds. Now you get an idea of what Mission Bay is going to do. They're coming right after them, full court pressure, and they're going to keep the pressure on the Matadors. Mm -hmm. So Mission Bay... Drive in, another scoop layup attempt, won't go. The rebound comes down to Mount Miguel. And that's Zaria Branch running the point. Tough follow away shot and got it to go from Shea Young. Not sure that's the way they drew it up, but a great <laughs> effort by Shea Young on the play. Ties the game up at two, just a minute into it. Seven, seven minutes left here in that first period. Jump shot rims out. For Mission Bay, offensive rebound, and that one rims in <laughs> from Yusra Garam. Yusra gets a great break on the play. The ball rolls in, but a great job on following up her shot. Well, the first one rolled out, and the second time it rolled in, so it uh, evened out. And Mission Bay is on top, four to two. Shea Young throws that one away, and this pressure you can see already is causing some problems. Ooh. Mission Bay loses it out of bounds. That was Brigine Shepard who lost that out. And it goes back to Mount McGill. Shea Young swings over to Camry Harrison. Harrison to Branch. Back to Harrison. Driving in now is a flip shot foul. The shot won't go, but Chantel Yell will head to the line to shoot two free throws. Right now, the Matadors are setting up Shea Young right at the top of the key and going to run the offense, I think, through her. And we're able to get the wing, come down and get a shot on the side and was fouled on the play. So Chantel Yell trying to tie this game up as Mount Miguel trails 4-2, but she misses the first free throw. 4-2 our score, Mission Bay on top, 6-15 left here in the first quarter, just underway, girls' Division Three championship game. Yell's second free throw is no good. It rolls out. So 0 for 2 from the line, and Mission Bay looking to push forward. Solomon drives in the paint, puts up a shot, and she was fouled going up. They're going to call a block there on Shea Young. She's saying she went straight up, uh, but the official disagrees, and Solomon will head to the line to shoot two. Right now, Mount McGill's extending their pressure out, and if Mission Bay gets past that first line of defense, they're heading to the basket. And Solomon's first free throw rattles in. Her third point. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Solomon begun, started her high school career at Country Day. Yeah, I think and, you are correct. And, and then transferred over to uh, Mission Bay. Mission Bay on top. Tough shot there. As Camry Harrison flips that one in. And the score is five to four, Mission Bay. 
Shepard's shot won't go. The ball is knocked out of bounds, and it will go to Mount Miguel. The Matadors will inbound this. Well, you can see right now, Mount Miguel has scored two buckets, but both of them have been on really tough shots. So Mission Bay has picked up the defense, and they're extending full court again. And they cause a turnover there. Solomon gets it. Solomon will drive in, changes their shot. The shot won't go. Rebound comes down. And now a foul on the shot attempt as Solomon went, to, or excuse me, that was uh, Cannon that went flying to the ground and she'll head to the line to shoot two. And that's the foul was on Chantel Yell, her first personal. And free throw rolls out, so Cannon can't uh, knock down the free throw. In a game like this, free throws will be crucial all the way through the game. Second free throw is up, and that one rolls out. So free throws are unkind for both teams in the early going. And now Mount Miguel will try to re capture the lead here if they can score. Shea Young has it, spins around, pulls up from the free throw line, well short, and nice save by Mount Miguel. And a three-pointer is fired, count the bucket. As I believe that was Harrison, or no, that's uh, Chantel Yell drilled the three and the foul. It was DJ Pope that uh, Dijanae Pope, excuse me, that went out and saved that ball, brought it back in. It looked like Mount McGill had a wasted offensive opportunity, and by saving the ball, Pope got at her teammate and she drilled a three and was fouled. Yeah, definitely. I thought that she had no chance of saving that, and she went and hustled out, threw it, and. Three-point shot, and they'll keep possession because the foul occurred after the shot. Missed three-point shot attempt there, and now an offense rebound. The ball flipped up. Shot won't go. Another big play by Pope. From uh, Pope, yeah, she couldn't convert, but uh, nice strong offensive rebound, and we have a block foul now. And this is going against Mount Miguel. It should be on the ground, and that should be called on Pope. Seven to five is our score. 501 left here in the first quarter. Mount Miguel has the lead over Mission Bay, and it's been a fast-paced game to this point. Mission Bay, and I guess the referee is trying to get something uh, situated at the scores table before play resumes here. Well, I think we've seen that uh, Yusser Graham. She is. She's a factor. She hustles hard, she's a big girl, and she uh, is not afraid to mix it up inside with the Matadors. And uh, so far, she's made three or four plays that have been huge for the Buccaneers. And they call, I think they switched the foul. The original call was on Pope, but looks like they may have switched that. Tough jump shot is drained by Solomon. Well, I tell you, I don't know who else was in the play except uh, except for Pope on the play. Yeah. And there's a foul on the other end as Zariah Branch was driving in, and she'll head to the line to shoot free throws. And who'd they call this one on? I believe that's going to be on Garam. And that is on Garam. <laughs> so Branch at the line shooting free throws. First one is up and air ball. So free throws have really been an issue. 0 for 3 so far from Mount Miguel. And 1 for 3, or 1 for 4, I should say, from Mission Bay. Second one is up, and that one is perfect. There we go. And it's funny how that works. Whenever you see it, no matter what the level, after a missed air ball free throw, the next one's perfect. No question. <laughs> it's funny how that works. Mission Bay throws it away here, and it goes back to Mount Miguel. Mount Miguel clinging on to a one-point lead, 8-7. It was pretty much token pressure there, mm -hmm. but uh, it forced the Bucks to make a long pass, and it was uh, inaccurate, and the ball went out of bounds. Branch has the basketball. Over to Harrison. Harrison to Shea Young. Shea Young will pull up from mid-range. It's short, and she was fouled. She'll head to the line to shoot two. A little late whistle, but I believe it was the right call. I would agree. I think 
It looks like right now, Shea Young is going to shoot the ball from anywhere from yeah. free throw line extended. She's gotten the ball uh, three or four times there, and she turns and lets it go. We haven't seen her go to the basket yet. But well, they're going to say that wasn't on the shot. Looks like it was after the shot. You're right. And it goes back to Mount Miguel underneath. That's the second time we've seen this in the early going where a foul occurred after the shot went up. Three-point shot, air ball. Shea Young, offensive rebound, puts it up and in, count it. As she was fouled, Shea Young, you mentioned she's just playing with a, at a different level than everybody else right now, it looks like, and not shy to put up the shots, that's for sure. Well, she's uh, an outstanding player, and as we talked about, she's going to the next level, and you can see inside, outside, she can play. And second one is short, and the offensive rebound is controlled by Mount Miguel. That was Chantel Yell who got it. And then the ball is knocked away, but it will stay with the Matadors. 419 in the first quarter. I think we've seen in these first four minutes that these teams are going to go after each other. There's no sitting back. They're going to be aggressive, and uh, we'll see who comes out. Mount Miguel has the ball. Yell on the right wing. Picks up her dribble. Swings over to Harrison. Harrison back to Yell, and now to Shea Young. Young, bad pass. You would expect better on that, and Solomon picks it off. Solomon drives in, lays it up, misses the layup. Shea Young with a strong rebound. Quickly gets it out to Harrison to run. Harrison, no look pass, throws it out of bounds back to Mission Bay. Both teams, I think there are a little bit of jitters because they're running. Timeout on the court. 347 left in the first quarter. Mount Miguel on top, 10-7 here on CIF San Diego.tv. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. And you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CIF San Diego.tv. Click on buy a DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIF San Diego TV. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIF San Diego TV. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619 677 3246. I'm Andrew Jensen alongside Bob Vilven here at Jenny Craig Arena on the campus of University of San Diego. And I got to tell you, I've been on a lot of different college campuses, and this one is one of my favorites just from the way it's set and the view you have. Beautiful location here right by the bay. Absolutely a great location when they put this in, and, and they still use the small gym for athletic events here. But this is an outstanding arena, and the CIF has been here the last few years. I think it's a perfect venue for the CIF finals. Yeah, definitely. They held it a few years back over at uh, Viejas Arena, back when it was Cox Arena. And, you know, I love that place, but it, it's not the same feeling for a high school. Field. It's a little too big. I would agree. It's pretty pretty outstanding for San Diego State, but a little, yeah. little big for us. <laughs> it's perfect for uh, – this is perfect right here. So Mission Bay gets the ball out of the timeout. Flip shot is up and no good. Jump shot, and Shea Young with the strong rebounds. And a steal from Mission Bay. And Mission Bay is going to lay it up and in. Again, it wasn't that there was great pressure, but uh, we just had outstanding uh, defense by Mission Bay. Uh, Aaron pass, and they convert the steal. Solomon will fire a three. It's short, and the rebound comes down to Mount Miguel. Dennis was the one that had the, the layup a moment ago. And layup on the other end. That one is no good from Bree Jones. And this is a, a track meet out here. Just what we expected. Uh, flipped and up and in. And that was Keandra Cannon, her first field goal of the ball game. And Mission Bay retakes the lead, 11-10. Tough pass. Dennis comes up with a steal. And she has checked in and has made her presence felt. Solomon crosses over a tough fadeaway shot, and maybe not the shot that uh, Bishop Bay was looking for there. Well, I think there's uh, there's no time uh, clock that's affecting these kids. They're going to come down and shoot the ball when they see an open shot. And uh, Solomon is the leading scorer on Mission Bay. If she sees an open opportunity, she's going to shoot it. So Mission, Mission ah, excuse me, Mount Miguel will inbound after uh, that air ball. And Harrison bringing the ball forward now for the Matadors. Picks up her dribble, throws the ball away. Solomon has it. Solomon will wait for her teammates to catch up. Now to Cannon. Cannon, beautiful pass. 
and the finish. And I believe Mount Miguel wants a timeout after Jenea Burton laid that one in for Mission Bay, but credit the assist to Cannon. That will be on the highlight reel. Right now, the last two minutes, Mount McGill has turned the ball over three different times, and Mission Bay has gone down and scored three different times. 13-10, timeout on the court. Mission Bay has the lead. 2-13 left in the first. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your sports program? Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 for your sports program. Again, that's info at kbcsports.com, or call us at 619-677-3246. So Mission Bay steals the inbound pass at Solomon. It's four steals in a row for Mission Bay. The cannon has it now. She'll pull up from just inside the free throw line. Misses badly. Shea Young with the rebound. And Young gets it to her guard. Over to the branch. Branch will lay it up. Shot won't go. Fight for the loose ball. It's controlled by Mission Bay. Mission Bay looking to push. Wide open for a layup. And uh, no, wipe off the basket. Travel. I think it was a good call. She just took a couple little baby steps as she was riding herself on the long pass to put it up for a layup. And the uh, ball turns over to Mount McGill. So 13-10, Mission Bay has the lead, and they, like you mentioned, just coming up uh, with steal after steal in the past four possessions. Harrison trying to bring the ball up, throws it over the head of Shea Young, another steal. This one by Solomon. Dennis now has the ball over to Cannon. Cannon drives in, lays it up, and in. That's the conversion they were looking for the last couple times down. As you mentioned, they've kind of thrown up wild shots. Cannon took that right to the basket and scored. I tell you, this Mission Bay team is tough. <laughs> I think we have a five-second yeah. violation, Andrew. On and the that's play. another turnover, and we have a sub coming in. That's six turnovers in a row now for Mission Bay. Or, excuse me, for Mount McGill. Mount McGill, uh-huh. And trying to uh, get across the court. The ball is inbounded. Mid-range jump shot is short. As Garum could not hit the bucket. And now Cannon has it on the offensive rebound to Dennis. Dennis will fire a three, won't go. And the ball is tipped around and controlled by Mount Miguel. Garam is lucky she didn't get a foul on that one. She reached over the back of uh, Young and very fortunate not to have a foul call. Harrison has the basketball. It's knocked away in a late whistle coming in for the foul. Maybe the right call, just a little late. So 102 left here in the first quarter. Mission Bay up by five, 15 to 10. And Mount Miguel is going to inbound from underneath. Foul was on uh, Jenea Burton on that one. And I think you're right. It was a correct call. Driving in is Yell. She is fouled. I, I believe they're going to say that was on the ground. And it will be uh, inbounded underneath. And that looks like Pratisha Solomon will be the one that gets uh, whistled for that foul. And now they're going to say one and one. So it's one and one. So Yell will help head to the free throw line. She is 0 for 2 so far. Well, going into the bonus before we've even gotten to the first quarter, it could be a factor in the game because Mount McGill has struggled offensively to get into any kind of sink. So this may be an important factor if and, they can make them. And can't hit the front end. It rims out. Well, Cannon bringing the ball up now. Cannon gets in the paint. It should be a charge. Ooh. I don't know about that. One official has it as a block. The other one, they're going to discuss it. I believe that was a charge. I think they're going to let the official that was closest underneath the basket who called the block. I think they're going to call a block. And that's exactly what they call. They call it on Harrison, and that's going to send Cannon to the free throw line. She is 0 for 2 at the free throw line in the early going. First one up and good. So Cannon is able to knock down the first one to increase the lead, 16-10, 50.3 seconds left. And Cannon's second free throw is good as well. Shea Young gets the inbound pass. And Mount Miguel is able to get across half court. 
And there's a block, knocked out of bounds. It will stay with Mount Miguel, but Deja Blanks had the shot thrown right back towards her. Well, Yusa uh, Garam, she does a great job as a complimentary player on this Mission Bay team, taking care of the inside on defense. Shea Young, tough follow-away shot, and she is fouled, and she'll head to the line to shoot two free throws. She has four points in the early going here, and she'll try to add to that total. Shea Young, as we mentioned, heading to New Mexico State, competing the WAC Conference. Free throw is up and good for Young, her fifth point. 38.3 seconds left in this first quarter. Second one is up, and that one is good as well. Young makes both free throws for the Matadors. Mission Bay has Shepard in the game. She puts up a floater. Shot won't go, and she's fighting for the rebound. It's knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Shepard. So Mount Miguel will have it. They can hold here for the final shot with 26.2 remaining, assuming they can get right. the ball inbounded here. Right now, Andrew, that's a big assumption because yeah. they have struggled against that. Well, they get it inbounds, but they don't wait for the final shot. They just drain the jump shot from Deja Blanks. Converts the quick basket for Mount Miguel. That's her first bucket of the game. 17-14, 10 seconds left. Nice pass down low to Garum. Her shot won't go. Fight for the loose ball. Knocked out of bounds. It will stay with Mission Bay. 2.4 remaining in the first quarter. So Mission Bay will inbound from underneath. We'll see what play they can set up here in the final 2.4. Ball is knocked away by Mount Miguel and will stay with Mission Bay. Mounted. Driving in and a shot at the buzzer won't go as Brigene Shepard's shot rolls out. So after one quarter of play, Mission Bay on top, 17 to 14 here on CIF San Diego TV. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the San Diego Hall of Champions. The Hall of Champions, located in Balboa Park, is the nation's largest multi sport museum with three levels of memorabilia and 68,000 square feet of space. It's also a great place to host your next big event. For more information, visit the Hall of Champions online at sdhoc.com. Today's game is being brought to you by Susan Cooper Photography, the official photograph for the CIF San Diego section. Susan Cooper Photography provides quality team and action photos and can also provide trophies and fundraising options all in one package. To have them come out to your event, contact Susan Cooper Photography at 619-501-7128 or visit them online at susancooperphotography.com. I'm Andrew Jensen alongside Bob Vilvin here at Jenny Craig Pavilion. After one quarter, it's Mission Bay 17-14, and it's been a track meet to this point. Just kind of uh, what we expected with turnover after turnover. Uh, and then when you're not getting those turnovers, they're not wasting any time on the shot clock. They're just firing away. Yeah, if we get a shot clock violation in this game, I'll be very <laughs> surprised. But Mission Bay had an opportunity to really take control of this game, and they could not convert the many turnovers. I think at one time there were six in a row by Mount McGill. And we end the quarter with them only leading by three points. So we'll see if that comes back, that they have not converted the turnovers that they should have. But I think you see that their pressure defense has caused troubles for Mount McGill in the first quarter. Mount McGill will start the second quarter with the basketball. Shea Young picks up her dribble, swings out the branch. Branch to Young. Young, nice position down low. Got it to go. I'm impressed with uh, Shea Young and her game. Well, they set her up on the wing on that side, brought her down to the baseline, back up into the middle. She just flashed to the post and uh, got the ball turnaround jumper. Yeah, she's a good player because she can play the post and she can play the perimeter and just kind of has that tenacity to her. Yeah, she looks very controlled. Solomon puts up a shot but misses, but the offensive rebound is controlled by Garam and she puts it up and in. I tell you, that girl makes a lot of plays from Mission Bay, and you don't see her out there much, and then all of a sudden, boom, when they need a play, she makes it. 
We have a foul going against, it looks like, I believe it's going against Mission Bay. And I think they're going to call that on Burton on the push. We'll wait for the official word here. I believe it was on Burton. Mm -hmm. And it's one and one already here for, uh, you know, for the rest of the, the half. Right, free throws have been an adventure for both teams, so we'll see if uh, Mount McGill can convert these because they're going to be going to the free throw line anytime there's any kind of reach or foul called on Mission Bay. Jay Young is, or excuse me, that's uh, Yell, Chantel Yell, was able to uh, knock down the first free throw. And the second one as well. 19-18, 17, or 7-18 seven, left here in the half. Cannon driving in and was fouled as she started heading towards the basket. And Cannon will head to the line to shoot two. Or, yeah, she fouled on the shot, so Keandra Cannon at the line shooting two. I think that was on Bree Jones, number 13. We've seen so far that Cannon likes to take the ball to the basket. She is very agile and very smooth on the play. and She can pull up for the jumper and shoot the three, but she prefers to take it to the, to the basket and looks like they're calling it a non-shooting foul. Yeah, that's why I was a little surprised when they started lining up. I thought maybe they were in the bonus, but uh, yeah, it was on the ground. Solomon fires a three, won't go. Rebound is controlled by Mount Miguel, and there's a foul, and that's going to send Mount Miguel to the line. That's going to be Blanks heading to the line. So this is, they're in the penalty here, Mission Bay. And this could hamper them because they like to play physical, but now every foul you commit, you're sending Mount Miguel to the free throw line. Well, and Mission Bay is not deep. They play about six or seven players only, and if they get into foul trouble, that could be a huge factor in this game. Okay. Free throw, no good. We're in the double bonus now. But now if you're Mission Bay, do you kind of back off a little bit on your, your press because you run the risk of getting your team in foul trouble and sending Mount McGill to the line anytime you commit a foul? If you want my guess on that, the answer is no. I've seen Mission Bay with two or three of their best players with four fouls. They do not. They, they keep going all that's, the time. That's just who they are. That's yeah. right. I don't think they're going to play any different today. Cannon had the ball knocked away. And Mission Bay gets it back. There's a whistle away from the ball. I don't know what, what happened. We'll wait for the call here. It appears they made a call on Shea Young at the uh, – Pretty much at mid court. Yeah, was well away from where the play was. And it is on Young. That's uh, two fouls on her, so something to keep an eye on. Jump shot, long two, no good from Mission Bay Shepherd. Rebound comes down to Mount McGill. Mount McGill throws the ball away. It's knocked out of bounds, but it will stay with. The Matadors. Yeah, I think uh, you've seen my comment and the way Mission Bay's playing it. They're still going after yeah. the ball. <laughs> Can't change who you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you shouldn't at this no. game. Mount Miguel trying to get across the half court line. There is no 10 second violation in girls basketball at the cross. And they're able to break that branch in the corner now. Almost throws it away. Now there's a fight for the loose ball. Jump ball. Arrow is going towards Mount Miguel. Oh, wait, now they're saying. Uh, I think it was a jump ball in possession, uh, Mission Bay. Mission Bay getting some substitutions in here. Ariel Dennis checking back in. She was a spark plug last time she came in. As we're all knotted up at 19, 628 left here in the first half. Shepard loses the ball, and we have a whistle. Now we should be in the one and one. And it's going to send Brie Shepard to the line. 
One of uh, three freshmen on this Mission Bay roster playing at the varsity level. It's pretty impressive. Well, we're gonna be shooting a lot of free throws yeah. the way this game has gone. <laughs> we're six minutes into the second quarter. Shepard misses the front end of the one and one. Shea Young driving in. Tough fall away shot. Can't get the roll. Hit every part of the rim, but didn't fall down. And the ball is knocked out of bounds to Mission Bay. I do like the little spin move she had. She's very much under control and the nice little fallback. And like you said, it just didn't go down, but it was a nice, nice shot. Garum for, th for a long two, won't go. The ball is knocked around and Mount Miguel got the rebound and they'll head to the free throw line to shoot two as it looks like Camry Harrison was pushed to the ground and she'll shoot two free throws and we'll have a chance to give the Matadors the lead again. Yeah, the foul was on Shepard. She just got caught and uh, right at the baseline and gave her a little shove and forced her out of bounds. Yeah, that's a freshman mistake right there. You foul someone complete opposite end of the other basket and you send them to the free throw line. Well, I think we've seen the Mission Bay's defense is extended right to the baseline when they're pressuring their defense and it cost them that time. So Harrison shooting two. First one is no good. Free throws have been an issue. We'll have plenty of opportunity to talk about them, but both <laughs> teams shooting a lot of free throws here in the first half. And that is the truth. Harrison's second one is up and that one's short as well. So 0 for 2 trip for Camry Harrison. Mission Bay gets it over to Burton and we have a timeout called by Mission Bay before uh, the ball was knocked away. So timeout on the court, 543 left in the first half. We're all tied up at 19. KBCSports.com will be providing live audio coverage of the state regional basketball championships as well as the finals. March Madness comes to high school basketball in California on March 17th for the regional basketball championships. Four venues of coverage around the state. Then, the following weekend, March 23rd and 24th, it is the California State Basketball Championships. You can catch it all on KBCSports.com, your home for high school sports. KBCSports.com and Play On Sports, Sports Network, showcase great high school games every week. And now you can access our content using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook, get the latest KBC and Play On news on Twitter, or catch our highlights in high definition on YouTube. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media site. Share all our high school action, see you every week, Brought to you by your home for high school sports, KBC Sports, and Play On Sports. So coming out of the timeout will be Mission Bay basketball from near midcourt. Ball is inbounded. A little bit of a double team going on Cannon now. Yeah, Mount McGill has now extended their defense out. They were running man-to-man, -man, now they're extending out. Dennis flips one up, shot won't go, an offensive rebound by Solomon. Her shot won't go, and finally the rebound comes down to Mount Miguel. Mount Miguel gonna push, trying to reclaim the lead here. Ball is knocked away momentarily. Harrison's able to get it back, and now the ball is loose again. And finally, uh, Mount Miguel is able to get a shot off from Brantz. Mission Bay at one time had four defenders within 10 feet of the half court line, and they are gonna pressure Mount Miguel the entire game against those guards and make them make the pass into Shea Young. Shot clock running down. Shea Young has it from straight away. Down the five on the shot clock. And they're gonna have to heave one up there. Shot won't go, but an offensive rebounds. And that shot will go. And that's to Zariah Branch, gets her first field goal of the ball game. And Mount Miguel reclaims a two-point lead. Mission Bay is right back down with uh, Tisha Solomon scoring quickly. Yeah, didn't waste any time. Solomon drilled that one and back to a 21-21 tie. And then looks like we know the ball is deflected out of bounds. So it'll stay with the Matadors. 4-19 left here in the first half, all tied up at 21. 
Looks like both teams are running about a seven person rotation through here. And so fatigue may be a factor if they keep this pace going up the whole game. Of course, we are going to have a lot of free throws, so they will get breaks. Yeah, those exactly. Times. Shea Young double teams. It's double teams, she's going to have to call a timeout. Or no, she turns around and just fires a shot, won't go. And the, off, or the rebound is pulled down by Mission Bay. Dennis has it, Ariel Dennis. Lays it up and in, but wipe it off. It's a charge. Great job. Great job there by Camry Harrison to stand in there and take that charge. Well, Mission Bay likes to push it up. She did have Solomon on the left wing, but decided to take it herself. And it was a good aggressive play. It just went against her. She was a little bit out of control and a good call by the official. And we have a media timeout. So again, we're all tied at 21 apiece. 3.56 left in the first half here on CIF San Diego TV. Need a highlight video for your athlete working to earn that four-year scholarship? Then you want to contact KB Sport, kbcsports.com. We can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we will give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing of DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches the link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, Contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. Catch the best of San Diego section basketball on cifsandiego.tv. You can watch a replay of today's game after each one concludes, plus check out the game highlights, player of the game interviews, and more or order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game. We're your home for basketball in San Diego, CIFSanDiego.tv. I'm Andrew Jensen alongside Bob Vilvin here at Jenny Craig Pavilion. A great game just as we expected, tied up at 21. And we are uh, halfway through the second quarter, 3.56 left. And it keeps, every time it looks like Mount or Mission Bay might pull away, Mount Miguel comes up with a run. And so Mount Miguel, although he, kind of undersized here and, and doesn't have the, the size of roster is uh, definitely playing with a lot of heart and keeping this one uh, close. Well, they decided to change it up a little bit and come out of that man-to-man -man and extend their defense out to uh, half court, and we'll see if they come back when they're pressuring Mission Bay again. Ball is inbounded to Shea Young. Young, has, there's a foul, and that's going against Cannon. That's going to send, it looks like, Yelled back to the free throw line. And that is going against Cannon. Well, Cannon made a simple swipe of the ball. The problem is when she finished that swing, she uh, knocked Yell right on the ground. It was an easy call, although I don't think she was too happy about it. So Yell at the line where she is misses the first of two, and the free throws continue to be a factor here. Yell with five points on the game and misses both free throws. It's got to drive Coach Sandoval no insane. As Cannon loses that out of bounds, it'll go right back to Mount Miguel. Turnover, as we mentioned earlier, both these teams cause a lot of turnovers. I'm not sure that was so much caused as just as Cannon went to take the ball up to the basket, she just lost the handle. Ball, they are able to break the press. Branch has it. Pulls up from the right elbow, shot won't go, and the rebound comes down to Solomon. Long, or shot from the free throw line is drilled from Solomon. That is her ninth point of the game. Ball knocked out of bounds, it will stay with Mount Miguel. Now, Miguel that time was in a 3-2 defense, so they're bringing their defense out to defend against that play, and Solomon does not hesitate if she has an open shot, and she just nailed that outside jumper. Ball knocked out of bounds again, stays with the Matadors. 3-11 left here in the first half. Inbounded. That's Branch. Branch picks up her dribble. Yell swings to the left side. Harrison will fire. Banks in the three. 
Do you have to call those when yeah. you shoot them? <laughs> and that gives the Matadors a one point lead, 24 23. And that might be short lived as we have a foul on the other end that's going to send Cannon to the free throw line. Well, as I mentioned earlier, Cannon likes to take the ball to the basket. And if she can lean in, you're going to have a situation where she's going to draw a lot of fouls and go to the free throw line. The question is, as we've talked about, can either of these teams get on a streak where they're making free throws? So Cannon at the line. And the first one rims out, but an offense rebound by Solomon, and she missed that one badly. I think she was surprised she had such an yeah. open shot and shot it right over the basket. So the ball goes back down to Mount Miguel. However, they oh, stays with Mount Miguel. Mission Bay had a steal, but they stepped on the end line, and they'll give it right back to the Matadors. Burton had a shot at saving that ball and thought she did. It was very close. Anyway, ball turns over back again to Mount Miguel. Ball inbounded over to Yell. Yell to Young. Ball flipped over. Yell has it. Tough fall away shot. Miss, hits the, the side of the rim from Shea Young. An offensive rebound. That shot won't go. And Garum with the rebound. And now we have a foul against. Mount Miguel on the other side of the court. That's going to send Mission Bay to the free throw line. The tempers are getting a little hot out on the court right now. We had both uh, Shea Young and uh, Key Cannon that kind of faced up each other after that play, and the referees went in, slowed them down. We've got a lot of basketball left to play, and you don't want that situation to arise in a CIF championship game. Well, the Aja Banks is the one that... Uh, or Deja Banks is the one that uh, gets that call. And Cannon knocks down the front end of the one-on-one -on, -one on this attempt. She'll have another one coming. Second one up, and that one off the back of the rim. Rebound comes down to Solomon. She's going to fire a long two. That won't go. Offensive rebound. This one to Cannon. Cannon lays it up. That shot won't go. Another offensive rebound by Solomon. Solomon's shot won't go. Garham with the rebound. She is fouled and still head to the line to shoot two. Any uh, questions on whether Solomon likes to shoot the ball when she gets it? <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any question on that. I tell you, we come back to Garham making another great play. She's just out there enough, causes trouble, and she's a big... Big body in there, and she can rebound and keeps Mission Bay alive, often in the offensive play. And she misses the first of two. Has another one coming her way here. Second one is no good, rims out. Rebound goes to Mount Miguel. So 150 left in the first half, all tied at 24. Shot won't fall for Harrison. And looking to push, Solomon has it. Her shot is short. Offensive rebound by Cannon. She flips it up. That won't go. We have an offensive foul called. And if that's on Cannon, that's three. And we have an injured player for Mount Miguel down. Yeah, that's on that Cannon. Three. That's something to keep an eye on. In the semifinal game against uh, Cathedral Catholic, she had four fouls. Uh, right into the start of the third quarter, and uh, she did not foul out. In fact, she scored about uh, 13 points in the fourth quarter to blow out that game. But uh, she plays pretty controlled when she gets into foul trouble. It, but it, it probably will be a factor as we go along against the Mount McGill Monitors. And I can't make out what player that is over there that's uh, being attended to. Well, a couple things we've established in the last minute, and that's when uh, Solomon gets the ball on the wing. She's going to fire it up. They're, uh, they're going to shoot it and see if they can rebound it and get as many shots up as they can. And, and the only thing is they have not been successful with those shots, and uh, thus we have a tie game. And free throws are a factor, too. Both, both sides aren't shooting the ball very well from the free throw line. And that may become a, an issue. Whenever you get to a CIF game, nerves do play a fa you know play a factor, and I'm sure it has a little bit to do with it. But 
we're going to see a lot of opportunities continuing with a minute 34 and a half. They're still going to, both teams are going to shoot some more free throws. And that was Chantel Young that was being attended to, but she was able to get up on her own power and walked off to the sideline, so it looks like she's going to be all right. Well, she's been asked to handle the ball a lot for, uh, for Mount McGill, and uh, they'd hate to see her go down and not be able to get back in the game. She'll take a little rest, but I think she'll be back in before too long. Harrison gets the inbound. Again, Mission Bay, full court pressure all the way. Like I said, I don't think they're going to deviate from this at all. Shea Young has the ball knocked away. And Mission Bay comes up with it. Solomon makes a nice steal and gets rid of the ball before she's called for traveling. So nice play by the Buccaneers. Wide open three. It's short from Shepard, and the rebound comes down to Mount Miguel. Shea Young has it. She is at the free throw line, and she's going to get called for a carry. And it'll give it right back to Mission Bay. It's a call we don't see very often, but quite frankly, should be called quite a bit. And that was definitely a carry by Shea Young on the play, and another turnover for Mount McGill. And as you notice, uh, Andrew Cannon is still in the game, even though she has three fouls. So yeah, the coach is pretty confident that she's not going to get another one. Solomon just fires a shot from three, won't go. Cannon with the offensive rebound, puts it up and in. And I think that's the reason she leaves her in the game. You take her out, you're losing a score, a rebounder, tenacious defense, you lose everything. Solomon makes the steal huh. out of bounds. 32 seconds left in the half. Shot is flipped up and in by Cannon. And she has back-to-back -back buckets and extends Missions Bay lead to four with 20 seconds left here in the half. Shea Young drives in, has the shot blocked. And it looks like we have an injured player. That's Young who's slow to get up. Ball knocked out of bounds. It will stay here. And now they're going to attend to uh, Shea Young who is blocked on one end, but... Uh, she looks like she's in pain over on the far side. Garham had two huge blocks for the Buccaneers on the play, and it looked like Mount McGill was going to drive forward and have a good play at the basket. Next thing you know, Garham rejects two, and the Bucs are going back the other way. The timeout on the court with 4.9 remaining as they are attending to Shea Young. Mission Bay has a four-point advantage, 28-24. Stay tuned for the CIF San Diego TV post game show, where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on CIF San Diego TV. And check that I was saying that was Shea Young that was injured. That is not Shea Young. Right, I believe yeah, that's DJ. not Pope. Yeah, I right, apologize Pope for that. On the play. That's all right. Mm -mm. She's still down on the floor. Mm -mm. I did not see if she turned an ankle or whatever, and I can't tell by what they're doing. Well, she's helped up now, okay. and we'll see. She's walking under her own power, so she just had a stinger somewhere. It looks like she's all right. Well, she might have caught an elbow, too, and got the wind knocked out of her. She went down pretty quickly, but she seems to be walking fine. I'm sure she'll be back in, and if not for these last few seconds, but as we start the second half. So 28-24, Mission Bay has the lead, 4.9. They're going to inbound from underneath. If it goes to Solomon, I say she shoots. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a good bet. Ball is inbounded, and it is knocked away. Shea Young has it. Down to one second. We'll fire at the buzzer. No good off the side of the rim. Had a good look at it, and then was close, but no cigar. 28-24, Mission Bay on top of Mount Miguel here in this girls' Division Three championship game in the San Diego section. We're going to step aside for the halftime break. We'll be back with the second half here on CIF, San Diego.tv in about 10 minutes. 3.16 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run this to the five, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow, he was in the backfield before the Running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from He Dion. took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A-gap. 
I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the and sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take. And there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30 to 24. Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side. Cut shot. Kept alive. Back in one by Cathedral. And this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide. And the Cathedral Dons have won the title 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball. Swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take. Blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block. Robinson leading the break the other way. Gets it to Grant. Oh. Slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10. The 5. Touchdown Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. Uh, sophomore Chris Carter steps under center. In their tight wing formation, Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run, breaks through, four tackles, and now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown, Imperial, on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40-yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20-yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64-yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him again near no the goal line. Second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game. 21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play the senior McMorrow with a huge kick not the longest of his career but the biggest of his career oh, St. Geez. Augustine leads it 21 to already 20. lining up they won't even have to run that one more play they just act yeah, yes why bother so there you have it your five-time defending division three champions the Cathedral Catholic Dons Running up over and through Olympian, 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. Patriots down 21-17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be 
caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchon in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel serve, championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's going to bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity, look for Wallace, no, they go Becker. Hayashi, then tap over and two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace for the match! Kathleen Wallace, no better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin, and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hillmore, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation, take a kneel. The clock comes out. The clock will tick down the players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did, did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone. Touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 to 6 will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that, hey, we didn't get shut out. So 44 to 6 is your score. And Helix is celebrating on the sideline. Oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended. Two minutes and five seconds left on the clock. Clock rolling. Third down and 15 for the Patriots. Dylan, he's got time. Steps up. He's going to chuck it deep. He's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you right there. Dylan goes to show why he is a Division I prospect as he's able to step up, elude the pressure, see Collins down the field, and make the connection. As I'll tell you right now, there has not been a bigger catch for Seth Collins this entire season. Fans nervously wait on the far side. Trips right. Vernon, the lone receiver to the left. Troy Zine rolls right. Here we go. And he's going to be... Oh, he gets away, but can't get away from the second slew. Vacaville takes over on downs, and the crowd erupts. So does the sideline. Got to watch it. Got to watch the sideline yeah, here. Yeah, they Remember, really they were up 35-26. Two unanswered touchdowns. That's going to do it, folks. Your 2011 Division II Sac Joaquin section champions, the Vacaville Bulldogs, they win 39-35 in a Third and four from the 24-yard line. If this kick is made, I think I know who our player of the game is unless Escalon can pull a rabbit out of the hat. Snap down. Hole is good. Kick from Bancourt. It's through the uprights. It is good. Bancourt gets lifted up by his holder. Hillmore. Welcome back to Jenny Craig Pavilion as we are just about to start the second half as Mission Bay has a four-point lead over Mount Miguel in this Division Three girls championship game. So Mount Miguel will start the second half with the basketball. Shea Young has it. We'll pull up from mid-range, and it is no good. Rebound comes down to Cannon, and Cannon is going to push. Cannon on the run. Shot won't go. Shea Young, nice strong rebound for the senior. Gets it out over to the guard branch. 
Branch to Yell, and Yell has it stripped away, goes right back to Mission Bay. Solomon made a nice defensive play on, the, on that particular play where almost like a block, she just took a swipe at it and knocked the ball away. Garum, nice jump shot, drills it, and she starts hitting that shot, and she's going to be very tough to guard. She's somebody you don't pay much attention to, and then knocks down the points, gets a big rebound for you, and just makes plays for the Buccaneers. 30-24, to 24, Mission Bay on top by six, and we have a foul as Shea Young was knocked to the ground, and I believe that is going to go against, uh, I believe that's going against Hilliard. Yeah, I think you're right. It will be Hilliard, team foul number one. And that's four on the center. Well, she is one that does not play with a lot of fouls, and she came out right after she got her third and immediately into the, into the second half here, she picks up her fourth. I don't think we're going to see her for a while. So Mount Miguel trails by six, 6.52 here in the third quarter. Nice drive by Yell. She can't get it. Gets her own rebound, flips it up, misses, and it's tipped out of bounds, goes to Mission Bay. Well, Mission Bay tightened up the defense a little bit more. Instead of extending now to half court, they've kind of gone into a little bit of a pressure defense from a 3-2 to putting pressure and double teaming the ball each time, and it paid off again. Solomon, tough. Follow a shot, won't go. And rebound comes down to Mount Miguel, but they throw it out of bounds, and it goes right back to Mission Bay. Yeah, Solomon, uh, she's, she hasn't seen a shot that she doesn't like. No, yeah. she's, uh, she's <laughs> not going to hesitate. Solomon gets the rebounds. Down the Garum, throws it out wide open. Three is perfect from Janasia, Janaya Burton. And the lead has expanded to nine. This is the biggest lead for Mission Bay. Shot is knocked out of bounds. It will be Mission Bay basketball. And I, I may be mistaken, but I believe that's the first the three-point basket that Mission Bay has hit all day. That is their first three they've They don't usually three. hesitate to shoot them, but uh, they haven't shot many, and I think that's uh, obviously the first one, and, and they scored it. Nice pass by Cannon to Great Garum. Play. That's going on the highlight reel. Beautiful look. You can see Cannon makes this team run, and that's why they have her on the court regardless of her foul trouble. So timeout on the court. And the lead has ballooned to 11, 35-24. Mission Bay on top, 5.59 left here in the third. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. And you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFSanDiego.tv. Click on Buy DVD, and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime, brought to you by CIFSanDiego.tv. So coming out of the timeout, Mount Miguel will let's see what uh, they draw up as they trail by 11. You know, for the most part, the entire first half was within a few points, and now all of a sudden they're down by 11. So we'll see how they respond. Well, we had a quick 8-0 run there by the Buccaneers, and uh, we'll see if Mount McGill has any kind of answer. Again, it's the pressure defense that's turning the ball over, and Mission Bay is converting. Mount Miguel looking to get the ball inbounded, and they do. Here comes the press. Harrison has it. Yell throws it across court. It's picked off, but out of bounds goes Ariel Dennis, and it will go back to Mount McGill. It was a heck of an athletic play by Dennis. She just barely touched the uh, sideline, but uh, she made a great save on the play and a great effort. Harrison. Swing it on over to Yell. Yell to Young. Now Harrison's going to fire a three. That one's well short. Shea Young, the offensive rebound, puts it up. Shot won't go. And the rebound comes down to Mission Bay. Cannon fires from the free throw line, drills it. You got to like Key Cannon, and uh, I think Arizona's going to like hers too. You can see she is a 
Great basketball player, has a great sense of what, how this game is going right now and is taking it over, literally. And it looked like there was about to be another turnover, but uh, a foul was called by the far side official. This is it. Thirty seven twenty four Mission Bay leads five eleven left here in the third. Now I think that might be Pope's third personal and that's why she came out on the play. Ball knocked away and it will go out of bounds. It'll stay with Mount Miguel. Burton had a shot of picking that ball off, and if she had, there was clear sailing to the basket for her. Young fires a long two, air ball. Ball saved, nice hustle there by Mount Miguel to keep the possession. Yell flips it up and shot won't go, but she'll shoot two. Well, it was a great hustle play by Mount McGill to keep it alive, and they're gonna end up with two free throws. We'll see if Yell, it's been a challenge at the free throw line for most everybody to see if she can convert these two. First one up, good. Lead down to 12, 37-25. That is the first point at 4.50 in the third quarter for Mount McGill. And second free throw won't go. Yeah, they've really struggled on the offensive side here in the second half, and a lot of that has to do with the defense that Mission Bay has come out here with. Cannon can't get that shot. Garam with the offensive rebound. Puts up a shot, won't go. Another offensive rebound. Solomon flips it out to Ariel Dennis. Dennis in the paint, outside the Shepherd. Back to Solomon. Solomon uses a pick, pushes off. No foul call. Garum has the ball behind the three point line. Dennis, nice behind the back to Solomon. Solomon can't get the shot to go, and another offensive rebound by Mission Bay. Nice pass by Dennis. Garum. Got it to go. Right now, the Buccaneers are just out hustling the Matadors, and they have an answer for anything that Mount McGill's throwing at them. They're hustling on the boards, getting the extra shot, and making it count. 39-25, under four to go here in the third, 355. Long three, and that won't go. That from Harrison, hit the back of the rim, fight for the loose ball, comes down the Mission Bay. Cannon. In the paint, shot won't go. Garum with the offensive rebound, turns around, she is fouled, she'll head to the line to shoot two. Well, I'll tell you, I know we still have a lot of time left in this game, but we gotta start thinking of player of the game candidates and uh, <laughs> the lady standing at the free throw line right now. <laughs> she has done everything that uh, coach could ask her. And I think she's really surprised Mount McGill at just how how well she plays and smart decisions that she makes when she's on the court. Now free throws are another story for everybody on the team as she missed the first. Another free throw attempt coming here. Team up by 14, 39, 25, 337 left. Second free throw up and that one rattles out, 0 for 2. And the rebound comes down to Deja Blanks and now we have a jump ball. And the arrow is pointing towards Mission Bay. Again. Full court pressure defense from Mission Bay. Gets a turnover in the corner. And we, media timeout, 332 left in the third. Mission Bay up by 14 here on CIF, San Diego.tv. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIF San Diego.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and be able to watch it again and again on demand while making money for your, your sports program? Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 for your sports program. Again, that's info at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. So Mission Bay will inbound coming out of the media timeout here and 
they have taken control of this game here in the third quarter. Right now we have 11 to one run. Just over four minutes played in the third quarter. If Mount McGill's not careful, this game could get out of control. Garham has it, dribbles inside the paint, swings it outside the Ariel Dennis. Dennis back to Garham. And that's a good call there by the official. Late call, but it was the right call. Yeah, she shoveled her yep. feet. That's about the first mistake we can yep. talk about. She's had a heck of a game. And it gives it back to Mount McGill. Mount McGill needs to get a little a push here before the end of the quarter and try to bring this back down to single digits. Blanks, shot won't go. Offense rebound by Shea Young, but she throws it away. And now Cannon on the other end gets to the free throw line. Will pull up from just inside the free throw line. Won't go. Ball kept alive by Garham. And Shepard flips it in. No good. Garham offensive rebound. Her shot won't go. She is just a beast in the rebounds here. She has here. done a great job for Mission yeah. Bay. And now we have a foul. as, And that's going to send Bree Jones to the line. And the Mission Bay folks aren't happy with that. I think, <laughs> I think the reason, it probably was a foul, but it was a late call by the official. And Solomon had already taken the ball and started up the court when the call when the whistle was blown. And I think it was just one of those things of a late call by the official, but I think, in fact, it was the right call. So Jones, free throw is well short. And... Bree Jones is at the line for her second attempt. First one an air ball, second one is short. Ball knocked out of bounds, stays with Mount Miguel, so they'll retain possession after the two missed free throws. They're gonna look to get this one inbounded. Young gets it at about the free throw line, has the ball poked away. She's able to get possession of it again. Thought about shooting, but now we'll, well now she will fire. And it's well short, Garham with the rebounds. To Solomon. Solomon, a mid-range jump shot, no good. And the rebound is kept alive by guess who? And goes back to Mission Bay, and the flip up and in by Shepard. She was fouled, she'll head to the line and try to convert the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Well, again, the ball kept alive by Mission Bay, and they will go to the basket as they did on that play. Shepard made a heck of a little leaping Lena shot. It went down, was fouled on the play, and a chance to convert that three-point. This game is on the verge of getting to that point where it's going to be tough to come back if you're not careful for uh, Mount Miguel. 41-25, Shepard for the three-point play, not able to get it, and the rebound is controlled by the Matadors. Ball is thrown away by Yell. I don't know where that was going, and Solomon is fouled as she goes up with it. Well, there's no question right now the Matadors are out of sync. It's because of the pressure defense of the Buccaneers, and they... Uh, They can tell that they have Mount, Mount McGill on the ropes right now, and they're, they're pedaling the metal and trying to go as hard as they can right now to see if they can't get this game out of reach. Second or First free throw is no good. I can guarantee both coaches aren't happy with the free throws results. They've been, both teams have been to the line a lot, but not a lot have gone in. And Solomon does knock the second one down. 2.17 left here in the third, 42-25, Mission Bay on top. Well, Solomon on the year is a 73% free throw shooter, which is excellent, but uh, boy, they both teams have had to struggle at the free throw line today. Another steal, this is Ariel Dennis. Nice pass, now back to Dennis. Dennis goes up, and there's contact, no whistle. Solomon is fouled, though, and she'll head back to the free throw line and shoot two more. Camry Harrison did a nice job defensively there. Hustled back and uh, prevented that uh, easy bucket by the Buccaneers. But again, they out hustle him on the rebound and Solomon at the line. So Solomon drills the first free throw. So 
Second one is up, and that one gets the roll. That falls through as well. And the lead has increased to 19 for the Buccaneers. Now Miguel having a hard time getting it in, and I believe there's going to be a five-second count. That is a five-second yep. violation. It's just been, uh, you can, I can uh, imagine what happened in the Mission Bay locker room at halftime, and they, we're seeing a completely different Mission Bay team. Well, you're seeing the conversion of these turnovers that they had yeah. in the first half. They didn't convert them. This time they're converting them, and just like this, they're up by 19 points. And forcing another turnover. This is a Mission Bay team that has rolled through the playoffs, defeating a school that I represent coaching, the, the Madison Girl team, 99-9, <laughs> and then just destroying everybody that uh, they've been facing in it shows why right now. They're just so quick. They have a, a center that can rebound everything. Is also capable of scoring. The one thing that I haven't seen so far is the, the three-point shot, but they haven't had to use it. Right. They can shoot three-point baskets, but, again, it's a lot easier and a lot higher percentage when you're shooting twos. Yeah, exactly. Why shoot threes when, when twos are working for you? Exactly. As Cannon is fouled, she'll head back to the free throw line. So Mission Bay has been making a killing at the line here in the second half. 139 left, and the score 44-25, Buccaneers on top. Free throw is good from Cannon. Mount McGill in just over six minutes has scored one point. One point on a free throw from Chantel Young, no field goals. That tells you Mission Bay's picked up the defense and converted the offense. And Cannon drills both free throws. Free throws the 139 left in the quarter. Well, one thing we haven't said very often is the person makes two free throws. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's been a rarity. Ooh, a uh, player went down hard near midcourt, and it's a good sign to see her getting up. As Deja Blanks went down hard, it looks like her head hit the court hard. And luckily, she bounced right up. And that foul was on Solomon, giving it back to, Mich to uh, Mount Miguel. And that is her third. But uh, as I've told you, the, these girls play with fouls, and they do a pretty good job of uh, being under control. And we talked about Cannon having fouls early in the uh, – she picked up her third in the second quarter, and she's been on the court the entire time. Pressure by Mission Bay, causing another turnover. Nice pass by Solomon, giving it to Dennis. Dennis, a beautiful look over to Cannon, and Cannon lays it up and in, and is fouled. Very smart play by Dennis, bringing the ball out on the wing and finding Cannon open underneath the basket for the easy bucket, and she's fouled. A great play by Dennis. So Cannon back to the line. And another ball knocked out of bounds. It will go back. It will stay with Mount Miguel. Well, you can see that's a person with three fouls right there. Very athletic. She gets in position, does not commit the foul, almost gets another turnover. Very close to a travel over in the corner over there. Mission Bay's double team, and anytime that ball goes near the corner. Chantel Young, or Yell, I should say. Chantel Yell gets it over to Harrison. Yell fires a two and drills it the first field goal of the quarter. 50 seconds to go before they could score a field goal. And Yell, the only person to score in this quarter with that field goal and one free throw earlier on. <coughs> Down to 38 seconds left here in the quarter. Mission Bay up 49-27. Tough shot won't go. And Mount Miguel has the, the ball after corralling the rebounds. Yell tried to pass it down low to Pope, but loses the basketball. Mission Bay comes back up with it, 20 seconds left. Cannon from straight away, now at the free throw line. Underhand scoop shot won't go, and a late whistle will send Cannon to the line to shoot two. I didn't get the opportunity to say that I did not think that they were going to run down the clock no. <laughs> to end the quarter, but they did not, just as I expected. I think you can tell just how... Adept Cannon is at making this team run and how fluid she is. She's going to be a very good player at the University of Arizona next year. And Cannon misses the first of two. 
She's been to the free throw line numerous times here. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 times, or not 14 times, 14 attempts at the line. Of the year she shot about 61%, which I think will get better as she goes along, but she's too good a player to only shoot 61%. Misses both free throws. Ball is tipped out of bounds. It will stay with Mount Miguel. It seems like Mission Bay gets their hand on everything, on every, just knocking it out of bounds, even if it doesn't change possession, they're just causing havoc. Yep, no question about it. She, there we go again. Another pick there from Shea Young. And Mount Miguel is able to tip that one away here with. Point eight on the clock. Well, as good a player as Shea Young is, she can't be the ball handler and the scorer and everything for this team and the rebounder. She needs help from her players, and she's a little frustrated and handling the ball a little more than she has to, and Mission Bay very quick will go after it. Solomon at the buzzer, got it! And Solomon drains a three as time expires to end the third. And that increases Mission Bay's lead to 52 to 27 at the end of three quarters. To say that was an exclamation point is uh, just not really <laughs> the best thing to say, but that was amazing. Today's broadcast is brought to, brought to you by the San Diego Hall of Champions. The Hall of Champions, located in Balboa Park, is the nation's largest multi-sport museum with three levels of memorabilia and 68,000 square feet of space. It is also a great place to host your next big event. For more information, visit the Hall of Champions online at sdhoc.com. Today's game is being brought to you by Susan Cooper Photography, the official photographer for the CIF San Diego section. Susan Cooper Photography provides quality team and action photos and can also provide trophies and fundraising options all in one package. To have them come out to your event, contact Susan Cooper Photography at 619-501-7128 or visit them online at susancooperphotography.com. So just about to begin the fourth quarter here as Mission Bay has turned the close game into a complete blowout at this point, 52-27. Well, no team's going to survive when you score three points in a quarter, and that is what's happened to, to Mount McGill. They are out of sync on offense. Credit the Mission Bay defense. They've done an outstanding job keeping the pressure on the Matadors, and Shea Young, as great a player as she is, is going to struggle if she's the only one that's scoring for Mount McGill. So Mount McGill will start the fourth quarter with the basketball. The ball is inbounded, and a layup is up and missed from Camry Harrison. A good look, but maybe force it just a little bit. On the other end, Solomon puts up a tough shot, gets her own rebound, puts it up again, and that one no good, and Shea Young pulls down the rebound. Ball is knocked away from Young. She is knocked down to the ground. No whistle. And jump shot down on the other end. Won't go from Blanks. The rebound comes down to Mission Bay. Garum, a shot from the elbow, won't go. Loose ball goes to Mission Bay. Ariel Dennis up top now to Cannon as we have 7-10 left in the ball game. 52-27, Mission Bay on top. Right now that 2-3 zone of uh, Mount McGill is not affecting Mission Bay at all. They're just backing it out. And Mount McGill is starting to stand around on defense instead of flying around. And when you do, it's going to create opportunities for the Bucks. Foul on Shea Young with the block, and that's going to send Shepard to the line to shoot two. Shepard's first free throw is up and good. The freshman getting significant playing time along with Angelisa Hilliard, who's also a freshman who gets some significant playing time but has been hampered with foul trouble in this game. But you figure they're going to be a staple on this Mission Bay program for a while, and and look like they're going to lose a beat. Blanks. Shea Young, her turnaround shot won't go. She's getting frustrated just because she's going to have to do everything herself. She's picked, just got called for a fourth foul right there. But Yeah, she, she is frustrated, but she needs to get the ball at that position on the uh, 
just on the left side, just below the elbow, because she's most effective at that shot, at that place. But right now, Mission Bay is just causing all kinds of havoc for Mount McGill, and they are not in sync on offense, and they're taking advantage of it, scoring at every opportunity. So Mission Bay, I believe we're in the penalty here. So Mission Bay, I think, is shooting free throws. It is going to be one and one. 6.47 left in regulation here, 53-27, all Mission Bay. I want to remind everyone to stay tuned for the one coming up after this. Again, Mission Bay will be in action, but it will be their boys' team taking on a very tough Cathedral Catholic team. Shot rims out on the one and one. Ball is kicked, and Mission Bay retrieves it. Solomon is hammered as she goes to the line. She'll shoot two. Well, Solomon, the last few times down the, the court, she knows she hasn't been in her outside shot, so she's starting to take the ball to the basket as well. There she drew the foul, and I think Mission Bay is going to be taken to the basket almost every time now and forcing Mount McGill to play some defense. Yeah, Solomon drills the free throw as Jenny Craig Pavilion is starting to turn red here very quickly as the Cathedral faithful are making their way in. And as always, they bring a, a large following with them no matter where they're playing. Nice block out of bounds. Yell tried to take it to the basket. It stays with Mount McGill. Well, we'll have to see who's going to do some scoring. Nobody has scored much in the second half for uh, the Matadors, but with Young on the bench, they're going to have a challenge getting the ball in the basket. Well, a good look there from Mount Miguel's branch, but she couldn't finish. And maybe a little too unselfish, but bailed out with the, uh, a I foul. Would I would agree there. She had a shot that she probably should have taken, and looking back, she'd take it again. But uh, again, just unselfish play by Garam on the play. And that's on Yell, her fourth. And Shepard misses the, or that's uh, Dennis missing the first of two. 54 27, 6 11 left in regulation, and in the second half, Mount Miguel still only has three points. As Dennis drills the second free throw. And Mount Mission Bay with this big lead still putting on the press. And as we mentioned earlier, that's who they are. They're not going to change it. No question. Uh. Foul trouble or whatever, they will put the pressure on you, and that's how they get the ball on offense. They like to run. Air ball is fired up by Yell. It goes out of bounds to Mission Bay. Yeah, the Matadors are pretty frustrated right now. And again, it's... Not so much the lack of offense, but the great defense that Mission Bay is pressuring and still all over the court, and I think they're going to do it for the rest of the game. It's the first time I've seen Mission Bay kind of <laughs> take some time here. I'm we're, a little We're both a little shocked. Perplexed here. <laughs> What's going on? Let me check the shot clock. Mm -mm. As Shepard took about 10 seconds to get across the half court line voluntarily, just waiting, and then went across and got fouled. And that's uh, Camry Harrison. Well, that was definitely a change in strategy. Neither one of us saw that coming, and I'm not sure we'll see it again, but it was an interesting thing where everything slowed down for just a second. Free throw is no good as that one rims out. Second one is good. 56-27, Mission Bay has the lead over Mount Miguel. 5.36 left. Dennis has the ball poked away, was able to save it. Close to going back court, but able to uh, corral it. And Cannon shot won't go, but guess who's there for the rebound? She can't finish it, but she must have at least 20 rebounds in this game. I, I mean, yeah. I'm not even exaggerating on there. Right? I'm not keeping <laughs> rebounds, but block shots and rebounds, she has been huge. I know she has double digits in 
points. He has 10 points, so she may be close to a triple-double. <laughs> I know she had double digits rebounds easily, so well, she easily has a double-double. She's now got with it, blocks. Yeah, it, she's probably got four or five, five blocks Yeah, as well. so she's getting, getting close, but easily a double-double. As Yale gets in the paint. And not only right there, she didn't block it, but she changed the, the shot. Right, Mama her Gill does not want to take the ball in against her, and it's uh, great to see. And we have a charge, take it back at, on Solomon. That was good play on the defensive side, but in my own personal opinion, I think she may have been a little bit too far underneath the basket, but they don't really recognize that at the high school level. I mentioned yeah. just, just a moment ago that Solomon's been taking the ball to the basket, not shooting outside, and that time she got called for the offensive mm -hmm. foul, but she's definitely going to the basket with the ball. Ball is thrown out of bounds. It will stay with Mount Miguel. Well, Cannon had a nice hustle play. I don't think she needed to dive to pick up the ball. I think with her quickness she could have just run over and picked up that ball instead she kind of dove lost it a little bit and ended up losing it out of bounds but she's very athletic and I think you can see that uh, that she makes this team go knocks out of bounds it will stay with the Matadors so yell looking to get the ball inbounded, and, and folks still at three points here in the second half. 4.47 to go in the ball game. And now we have a foul on somebody. Who'd they call that? I believe it's going against Mission Bay. And they'll inbound from the side. So it was on Solomon. Uh, that's a one and one, so that's going to send, I believe, Yale back to the line. Tisha has, or no, they're going to send, uh, that was fouled, was uh, Bree Jones will be at the line. Tisha has at least four. No, she has, yeah. that is her fifth, yep. And she's only a junior, she'll be back for Mission Bay next year, and she's going to make some noise in the state playoff run here starting next week. This Mission Bay team is going to be a tough out. They are very talented. I think the latest rankings, they were ranked second. So Yeah, they'll be a tough out. They will have a good opportunity in the state as well. And that starts on Tuesday, and they're going to have a home game. Uh, or actually, I believe it starts Monday, just depending on um, where you get put. But uh, okay. starting next week, they are going to have a home game. Yeah, that's correct. In fact, they'll probably have home games all throughout until they get to the regionals. Uh-huh. And the second free throw, no good. But Mount Miguel does get one out of two on that attempt from Bree Jones. And we're three and a half minutes into the quarter, and that's their first mm -hmm. point of this quarter. And again, Mission Bay just sitting back on the backcourt, not in any hurry to cross, just sitting dribbling around since there is no 10-second count at the high school level for girls. But there is a shot clock, so they just wait, milk about 10, 15 seconds, and then go across half. Shepard gets hammered as she heads to the line. And Shepard will be shooting too. It seems like every time Mission Bay takes it in, Mount Miguel's fouling. Yeah, Mount Miguel needs stops, not fouls. And if Mission Bay runs the clock down as they are, obviously the clock is in uh, in their favor, and then get a foul, it's uh, Mount Miguel is going to have a huge road ahead. And free throw rattles in for Shepard, her third point of the ball game. Shepard will get ready for her second attempt here. Second one is up, and that one is no good. Rims out. The ball knocked out of bounds again, going back to Mount McGill. I wish there was a stat on that. I'm sure yeah. someone has it around here somewhere, but they must have deflected 30 passes. Yeah, in you this mentioned one. every. they get a hand on about every ball. And if you do defensively, odds are you're going to get a lot of those turnovers. And there's there. another deflection out of bounds, and it goes back to Mount McGill. Well, Hilliard's back in the game, so she got those four mm -hmm. fouls, and now it looks like she'll have the opportunity, if she can stay in the game, to play these last four minutes. I can imagine the practice at Mission Bay must be pretty intense. No, oh, no question. <laughs> I can only imagine what they do to keep in shape like they do and just go nonstop and cause such havoc. And you know the people that aren't getting to play this year are working against this team every day in practice, yep. and you know they got to be getting better as well. 
Three-point shot is up, won't go from Mount Miguel. Branch couldn't get that shot to go, under four to go, 3.43 left in regulation, and again, Mission Bay, no rush, just kind of milking the clock. Now, I'm impressed with this Mission Bay team, I, I truly am. They're gonna be uh, interesting to watch as the playoffs continue. Yeah, they just have a nice complement of players. And a three, that's only the second one of the day, but Mission Bay, Janae Burton drills it. That's her second one of the day. She's the only one to have a three. And we have a foul that's gonna send Pope to the line, or no, excuse me, that is a Blanks to the line. Blanks will be at the line trying to cut this lead in half, 60 to 28. And again, it's just hard to fathom that just halftime, it was only a, like a four, four point, point game. 28-24. And now we're at 32. Yeah. Yeah, when you say cut it in half, we're talking uh, minimal points now. We're talking about a uh, huge deficit for Mount McGill, and, and they're playing. They're just playing out the uh, the clock now, and Mission Bay is getting ready to substitute a lot of extra players. And here comes uh, players that, like you mentioned, doing a lot of work at practice but don't necessarily get to see a lot of playing time. Well, here's their reward. They get to come in here for a little bit. Well, you got Irma Ely, number 12, is in the game, and uh, Olivia Olson, number 23. They haven't had a chance to play much this season, and they're getting to bask in the glory a little bit for the Buccaneers. Free throw is up and in. Or blanks. Sixty to twenty-nine. Blanks will try to cut the lead in half right here. Free throw is up and no good. Dennis pulls down the rebounds. With three minutes to go here. Ball is kicked out of bounds, and now they're going to call a foul. And that's going to send Shepard back to the line. Well, we just talked about every opportunity. They milk the clock down, then they take the ball in the basket. Mount McGill commits a foul. Uh, you, you can't ever get back into a game doing that, and Mission Bay is taking it to them, and deservingly so is, is going to capture this Division Three championship. So Shepard at the line. First one up, and good. Well, she's pretty poised for a freshman out there. And, oh, uh, yeah, a without a doubt. Great opportunity to play here at Jenny Craig and get that experience. And uh, she'll be one to keep an eye on over the next few years. Brianna Shanae Shepard hits two. 62-29, under three to go. Drive in, shot up, won't go. Blanks with the offensive rebound, flips it up, shot won't go again, and now we have an out of bounds as Pope was standing out when she tried to save that, and they'll take it back to the Buccaneers. Oh. So Mission Bay is ready to milk some more clock here, and this time out Miguel is just content to let him do so. In the past, they were kind of putting pressure on the ball. Now they're just waiting in the backcourt. Well, Shep as I mentioned, Shepard's pretty confident going a little 1-4 offense here and take the ball to the basket. She's done it three times in a row, and she almost got fouled again. Finally, Mount McGill gets a stop. And a steal by Dennis. She has been all over the place. She's going to lay this one up. And she is fouled. Dennis will head to the line to shoot two. She's one of those players you want on your team. She doesn't look to score. She just does the dirty work, and, and you can tell she just thrives on the defensive side yeah. and getting steals and doing stuff that the box score is not necessarily going to show all the time. Right. She's run down a number of balls, and instead of shooting them herself, she'll give it to her teammates, and they're the scorers on the team. She does a lot of the work. It's a nice, nice team. So 204 left here in the ball game, and Mission Bay will be your Division Three champion. 
as they have a commanding 64 to 29 lead. Well, to say Mount McGill went into a shooting slump is uh, an understatement. They just uh, have not had many opportunities to score, and Mission Bay has totally dominated the second half. Yeah, <laughs> again, this was a four-point lead for Mission Bay at the half. They're up by 35. Mount Miguel has just been shut down completely offensively here yeah, in the Co second. Coach Sandoval has had an, a lot of success at Mount McGill, and uh, there's nothing he can do about it. And he knows his team's taking it on the chin today. But uh, Mount McGill's been in this game many times, and uh, I know the Matadors will be back. And uh, Coach Sandoval does a great job with that program. Mount McGill and Mission Bay with his commanding lead still putting on pressure with 109 left. They know one way, <laughs> pressure. <laughs> so again, I want to remind everyone to stay tuned for the game that's coming up after this, Cathedral Catholic and Mission Bay Boys, which is, should be a great one. They're both in the same league. They faced each other a couple times already. Both have great talent, should be a fun one. And that's coming up uh, shortly after this one concludes. Free throw won't go but they do pull down the offensive rebound as we approach the one minute mark. And we're gonna have our player of the game interview and I'm giving my vote to Yusra Garum. I, although you can make an argument for Cannon as well, it was Garum that just really just caused havoc defensively, scored offensively, got rebound after rebound. I, I don't think there's any question. I, I commented during the game, she just is a perfect compliment for this team. They have a lot of stars on this team, and not, the people don't pay much attention to her, but she had an outstanding all-around game, and I really think was a difference uh, on the boards and, and rebounding and making the little subtle plays to help Mission Bay win this game. So almost there, 30 seconds remaining. Mission Bay is going to be your Division Three champion. Ball is lost out of bounds, goes out as Irma Ely. Tried to move up with that, but slipped out of her hands. And now 22.9 remains, and Mount Miguel has it. Branch drives baseline, lays it up, misses the layup. And that's the kind of second half it's been. Wide open layup and just missed it. No question. Mount McGill scores three points in the third period, and right now they've only scored two, scored two points in the last period. And credit Mission Bay's defense. A couple girls with foul trouble, they still go after it and pressure defense the whole time. And like you said, they are going to be tough in the state playoffs. And that is going to do it. 64 to 29, Mission Bay is your girls' Division Three champion as they win convincingly in the second half. Just putting on a dominating performance. And they are, we've said numerous times, will be tough as the state playoffs begin next week. We're gonna step aside. We'll come back with our player of the game interview, maybe a few moments as both teams have to go through the, the trophy uh, presentation and pictures and stuff like that. So stay tuned. We'll get her up here as soon as we can. Yusra Garam will be our player of the game, the sophomore, who put up uh, at least a double-double. And we'll have a word with her up here on CIF, San Diego TV. Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs and Jordan Lertique will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 nothing, facing adversity, and they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attack there by. Bosback, a second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call! Ah, winner, oh. it's the over, the over the net call! Oh my goodness! Bosback reached over on the attack. 
a Maverick Air wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh, baby! Shrigley with the jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. <laughs> Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. <laughs> I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man Ooh. a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a hand off to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way as he's at the 10, 5, touchdown. Patrick Zeller got he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines and he was in a foot race and he went all the way for the touchdown broke a tackle and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes a snap play action to Campbell looks down the field now here comes the pressure he's going to be hit he breaks the tackle rolls left now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. And reasonably so, he's been doing a good job of leading this offense. Looking for his first touchdown pass of the season for Ray Hudson, and Ray Hudson gets both feet inside the end zone. Touchdown Foothill. Like you said earlier, it's 6-2 body frame, and can probably, in what, you, what we just saw there was getting Randy Moss, was what we call getting Moss. Um, clearly just leaped over the defender there, landed both feet in, feet in bounds. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point, and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last Bullard minute. Bullard trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, Cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rotobaugh, no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 25-19, Foothill wins it three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he he, um, he can make things happen here in this ball game. They will go with him, Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear to Tory territory, the 25, the 20. The 10, the 5, touchdown Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what. There were at least three times on that, on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there. Cost, cost La Jolla Country Day as Bula Graft, the freshman running back for Bishops, is able to take it in. And, and that was a determined run there, Andy, by. So first and ten, Brandon Lewis in the shotgun has time to throw, and he'll fire, and he has a mad diving catch. Did he hold on to it? He did. What a catch from Kendall Keys. And that may be the KBC Sports Player of the Week. <laughs> what a catch, by He laid himself wow. out there, and a great throw, as you said. Read, read it nicely, did Lewis, and really caught his receiver on the go and just kind of put it out there right on the outskirts of his fingertips. He laid out and he made it. No he doubt. might be called upon to make a crucial kick. Second down and eight after the two yard gain on the receiver screen. And Ooh. Paulson fires across the right seat for Jack Finney who makes the catch. Stiffs on the defender at the 50 and is finally brought down at the Amador Valley 45 yard line. Flags flying later to go play. for it. Fourth and three. They figure three is easier to get than the field goal at this point. And it's Paulson looking for Finney. Right seam, side, right seam, touchdown. Jack Finney makes the catch. 
bounces off a defender. A 23-yard pass and catch from Paulson to Finney, and the Foothill Falcons are back out in front. They certainly are. Finney lining up a tight end. I had a feeling that Paulson was going to look right side there as Chase Miller was lined up, receiver far side, but instead it was Finney straight to the post, and Paulson picks him out in stride again. The third catch on the drive for He's Finney. give it to Tyree on an exchange against the zone, doing a little three-man weave. This is Tyrell back with it. Tyrell's going to go lob back door. Tyree Robinson with a flush. Now that was nice. Very nice design play. Uwaba. Uwaba back there. Bogart takes a snap. He's going to run the play. He's going to throw. He's got a man open at the 10. It's under thrown. It's incomplete. No, or is it caught? It is a catch. Wow, juggling catch inside the five-yard line. Maliga. Was that Maliga pulling that one in? It is Maliga. Boy, that ball was deflected by, by one of the Falcons. And then Maliga, he lands on the ground and pulls it in. What a catch. Set up with three men in the backfield, back to the wing. This time inside counter to Telefaro. No, they're going to throw this one. He's got a man open. And a great, what a great, what a catch! What a grab by tight end Joe Gigantino. He must have bobbled that ball four times in the air, and he was actually tipped by the defender and had the presence of mind to keep his concentration and make the grab. Unbelievable catch. And the ball at the 29-yard line of the Eagles, and you can see the defense, they're still bewildered. How did he come up with that Unfazed, grab? Unfazed, even with two defenders around him and four big, that's so unconventional for a guy to handle the ball so well. January! Oh. With a one-hand jam. He was not going to be denied there. Coming over was Milmo. Bradshaw Christian is going to bring the starting unit out on the field one more time just to take a knee. Welcome back to CIF San Diego TV. With us now, our player of the game, Yusuf Agarum. Congratulations on the victory. You guys win convincingly, 64 to 29. What happened? You guys were only up by four at half, and then all of a sudden, you just literally exploded and annihilated them. We have just a little have, bit closer. There you go. We have great coaching staff, <laughs> and um, you know, during halftime, he took us in. And he said, you know, we worked, we worked all, we worked really hard to go out there, not to win by four points. We have to make a statement, basically. <laughs> you know, they did a good job, you know, convincing us. We have a whole bunch of seniors that have never been here before, <laughs> so it was it was great That's to finally get them here, and it feels it feels good. Now, you had 10 points, and I don't have your exact total on rebounds, but yeah. it has to be near 20, yeah. <laughs> and and at least five blocks, and countless other shots that you altered. So, I mean, you had a huge impact in your game. Talk about your performance tonight. I just went out there. Um, the first half, I was a little, you know, on and off. Wasn't really playing to my full potential. The second half, you know, we needed somebody to lead the team. It was kind of breaking down, you know, and it was just one, the littlest thing can just influence the whole team to make – the, you know, big impact on which what happened. So, now, talk about your performance. I mean, or your team. You guys are, you know, the number one seed, and you guys are definitely a threat to make some noise in, yeah. in the postseason or in the state tournament. Did you guys expect to be this good once uh, the season started? Yeah, yeah. We, we were. We went and um, we were twenty-two and five. So, we we were expected to go far. We expected ourselves. We wanted to. We go, we, we go to practice every day, we run, we do countless, you know, just, just everything to get better. Okay. And then what's your uh, celebration celebration plans for uh, the victory? I think we're going to go out to eat, you know, bond a little yeah. more. S stick around and watch the boys game yeah. play at all? Or? Yeah, we're going to, of course. You know, they supported <laughs> us, we're going to support them. But, you know, as far as just everything else, we're going to go. We're, season's not over, though. we got four more games. There you go. Well, so, now. We just have to get back to business. If, if the boys win today, are they going to go out and celebrate with you guys, or are you guys doing your own thing? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, they Maybe. have to win first. So. Yeah, they have to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they should win. They. All right. Well, that was Yusuf Agarum, our player of the game, as Mission Bay walked away with the 64-29 to and the convincing victory over Mount Miguel. Stay tuned. We're going to have the boys game of, Mount, or of Mission Bay and Cathedral Catholic coming up shortly. <laughs> 